They're coming for your VRAM in the name of profits. Affordable and very capable systems that are able to run local AI may be extinct. How this is happening, why this is happening, and how it impacts you are what we're going to cover today. The low-end lines of GPUs from both AMD and NVIDIA are rumored to be considered for removal. Now, this is something that might be shocking because we've had the 60 lineup for a very long time. But if you're talking about the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, this is one of the most cost-effective ways to run local AI on a new GPU that can also do things like game and be a pretty good all-around performer. And if we saw the removal of that SKU, that would definitely raise the bar of entry if you wanted to get into local AI. There is a shortage of constituent parts for manufacturing storage components like memory, tie this into the AI boom and the massive demand for data center GPUs, as well as the amazing amount of the material that is required to build these up. And you have yourself the storm that we're living through right now. What you're going to be able to afford getting into a local machine for AI or if you're just looking at gaming or content creating, probably is going to equate to raised prices for you. And certainly DDR5 and DDR4 have been through the roof recently, especially DDR4. With DDR5, the prices are expected to continue to rise or to be as high as they are, probably rise, all the way into quarter one of 2026. If you want to also think about it in a certain way, you could think about this as a profit optimization that is probably being very strongly considered as there have been some underperformers recently that definitely those constituent parts possibly could have been better used in different SKUs. And when you look at the ability to easily capitalize on a high internal rate of return, a company is going to make the most logical sense for itself and for its shareholders if it aligns towards that. And that may not be working out in your favor, but it definitely is probably going to work out in their favor. So what can you do? So I'm going to break this down by what I think are probably the people that will end up viewing this. That is going to be local AI users. Also, we're going to look at content creators and mid-range gamers. And at the low end, we're going to look at like budget gamers. These are actually definitely good categories to break things down into because one of the most, possibly the most asked question on this channel is, should I optimize for higher amount of VRAM or should I optimize for performance of the GPU? And if you're into local AI, you have to consider the amount of VRAM you have first and foremost, and that definitely does present different recommendations based upon what you might buy based upon your interest category. If you for sure are into running local AI, or if you're just dabbling, or if you're not interested at all. So for the people that are into local AI, again, huge shout out to our channel members. You can join down below. And also it does allow me to do things like give this independent, unbiased review that does not have the onus of, will I get another one hanging over my head since I don't take sponsors. And definitely that is enabled by the channel members. So thank you very much for that. But if you're looking at planning a setup, or if you already have a setup, I think there's slightly different recommendations. So if you are planning a setup and you are planning on 60 series, then I think you've got to be a little bit cautious of the NVIDIA potential for removing the 5060 series lineup. Not necessarily a bad thing for the 8 gigabyte GPU, but pretty bad if you're looking at the 16 gigabyte GPU, which in the $430 price range is one of the best bets out there. If you're looking at the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte, it is also a really good performer and it is even cheaper. So definitely if they do remove those two lines, that could be a pretty big impact in the 16 gigabyte realms. So I would expect them to probably not be a continued thing. Could be wrong. We're dealing with lots of rumors and speculation, but I would consider it and that way you're not surprised. So most of the prices that are out there now have already landed for the sales on GPUs. In my opinion, you're not going to see major reductions on the high VRAM count GPUs. I think you will see reductions on some of the lower VRAM count GPUs. It's been a lot of rumors on this one, and it's gone a lot of different ways, but most of them have had pretty negative connotations around them about the either delay or the cancellation of the line. The 5070 24GB has been something I know I'm waiting for, and I think a lot of other people have been waiting for also. That may not end up happening. If we see continued delays, 
specifically we got CES coming up. If we don't see the announcement of the Super lineup there, then I think the chances of them actually canceling it could be pretty big. This is where I am, so I'm probably going to have a little bit more information regarding this. But I would recommend if you have DDR4 systems, you look at what you want to upgrade, how you can upgrade it, and especially whether or not it is something that you have to upgrade. Do you have ancillary systems? I have like a lot of ancillary, I have terabytes of ancillary RAM. So that is definitely DDR4, and it definitely needs to get sold at this time when DDR4 is still in some high demand. If I look at DDR5, am I going to flip around and buy a DDR5 system? DDR5 systems are stupidly expensive because of that RAM component. Again, even though motherboard prices have been looking pretty attractive recently, man, the RAM prices for DDR5 are not good either. So definitely have to weigh a lot of considerations around that. Certainly, if you're looking at GPU optimization, selling off a 4090 right now seems like a good idea. Certainly 3090s in the $750 price bracket. I don't see the price on those going up and I'm not sure I see the price on them going down. So that one I think is a, it's been one of the more consistent GPUs out there to retain value. So that one is a little bit harder. While I definitely consider selling the 4090s myself, the 3090s, I wanna hold on to them because they just do so good. Definitely one of the 4090s is gonna go in my setup. Next, we're going to talk about mid-range kind of gaming and possibly content creators. The 5070 is in the non-TI version. In the 540 range, it's a pretty good performer. And definitely, if you're looking at content production, it will stomp. It will absolutely stomp. My 5060 TIs, I actually love them because they encode so fast when I am, you know, encoding media, which can be like hours long sometimes in the past. So it's really great to have that be like 30 minutes instead of hours long. I would also suggest that if you're looking at the sale prices on those, maybe they go down a little bit more, but I feel like the price drops have already happened, seeing them come down pretty substantially. Now, a good all-arounder that you would also probably want to consider is something like the 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte. Now that one can really do some AI stuff. It is substantially more expensive. It is in the 850-ish price range, and that is actually on sale. So that one, I don't expect that SKU to get axed. I think there's a lot of demand for that particular GPU, especially because it will do a great job gaming, a great job with content production, and a good entry into doing local AI at very decent performance levels. And of course, as I've said, avoiding the middle is usually a good recommendation unless there's a sale. So definitely those two on sale. The 5080s, I think unless you're a really serious gamer, there's less and less reasons to go for that, especially given the VRAM count on it. And so the budget gamers not looking at local AI, I would suggest that you look at the 5050 as something you should never have bought in the first place. Hopefully if you have one, you can sell it for at least something. If you're looking at 5068 gigabytes, well, maybe that is something you want to consider, especially going into Cyber Monday, Black Friday timeline here. I would check the links below, but definitely that is something to consider because it might be one of the best times to get a really cutting edge, state of the art, yet still pretty, you know, not super performance oriented, 1080p gaming machine. And definitely if you're on the AMD side, I think the eight gigabyte versions are a little bit even more disappointing, but Intel, I would love to see them show up in a bigger way. At the price point for the B50, it should have been cheaper, and I don't think the B60 is going to come around in any appreciable numbers. They really have missed the ball, like, a lot. The B50 is the closest they've came. And I hope this has some good action items for you. If you are nervous, if you're excited, if you are looking for a rig, if you already have a rig, I tried to cover a little bit of advice and a little bit of information that hit all of those. And so certainly if you're just getting started and you're looking for a good head-to-head -head comparison between the AMD and the NVIDIA in the 16 gigabyte budget range, check out this video that I've got here where we cover all of the characteristics of running local AI on them. And if you're just looking to get up and running with your first local AI machine, check out the video down here where we go through all the steps to get you up and running with a great Olama and OpenWebUI system.